All right, so here I am, really this very unlikely mom, right? I, this is not in my plan. So I'd plan to put my kids in school, maybe get a job, and all of a sudden I'm seeing something happen in Sierra first, like her eyes are lighting up, and I'm thinking, I don't wanna send her to school. Like even though she can qualify for her age next year, I would be sad. I would actually miss her. I'd be missing this opportunity to watch her getting these things. And not only that, but I'm accomplishing with her in about an hour every day what it's taking Savannah eight and a half hours every day, five days a week to do. And so Savannah's getting up in the morning, you know, 6.30 in the morning, I'm packing her a lunch, I'm putting her on the school bus, I'm saying goodbye to her, and she's gone. And I wake her sister up at about 8.30, and we have breakfast and we hang out for a little while, then we do some school and we're, done, we're finished. And I started to think to myself, this is what my life could be like. Life could be different. It doesn't have to look this way. About the time that this is happening, I began to really focus in on some of the issues that I was having with Savannah when she would come home from school. Um, she was exhausted for one thing. She wasn't loving learning. I did not, I, she never came home from school excited about what she was learning. And in fact, there were some bullying, some things that were happening on the playground stories that she was telling me. One time I went to see her at school during the day and I thought I'll show up for lunch and I'll surprise her. And she's in second grade. So here's this little girl, you know, she's seven years old. And I pull up and I walk with her little sister and her baby brother over to the field where they're out on the playground and I watch. And my daughter is behind the backstop and she's by herself and she's crying. And it broke my heart, like I'm a mother and I'm, I'm thinking, why is no one playing with Savannah? What is, what is going on? And I went, I went to the office because I couldn't go out and see my daughter without checking in into the school office. So I went to the school office. I said, hey, I'm Savannah's mom. I'd just like to talk to her for a minute. It took an act of Congress to get my child off of the recess playground and into the office to talk to me. And she was very unwilling to say what was going on. I said, hey, honey, I came by to, um, to surprise you and say hello because I remembered that my grandparents used to come by and see me when I would be out on the playground at our little Christian school. And there was never this rigmarole. They would just show up and, get, you know, hi, grandma and grandpa, and they could come and see me. It's not like that in school today. There's a lot of security. A lot of things had to happen before she could see me. And by the time I got her home that afternoon and she began to tell me how she really felt about being away from us all day long, do you know what it boiled down to? She heard that her sister was learning at home and she wanted to learn at home too. And all of a sudden, it was, it was as if a switch flipped in me. And I realized, not only can I do this, but my daughters are happier when I'm doing this. Our daughters, they, they're young. They want to be with their mom. And so I really began to take it to the Lord in prayer. It was something that I knew I can't do this on my own strength. I need wisdom. I need encouragement. And it wasn't too long after that, we had one other incident, and this was really the, the tipping point for me. The bus came to pick Savannah up in the morning, and Sierra went out and followed her to the, to, because the bus would come right to my house, right? So a long time ago, I thought, I have won the, the lottery of the school buses because the stop was in front of my house. So the bus would come in front of my house, and Savannah would go out and meet the bus, and Sierra would follow her. Well, this particular day, Sierra went out and followed her, and she came right back in, and she was crying. And I said, honey, what's wrong? And she said, well, Savannah told me that she's embarrassed to have me out there. I'm too little. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, <laughs> she's seven. Now, <laughs> you know, what, what's going on? But then I realized there's a separation happening. Now we've got the age segregation thing going on. This doesn't happen inside of our home, right? The, the seven-year-old doesn't say to the five-year-old, you're too little, I don't want to play with you. No, they just, they find things to do together. They explore together. They often would have their little baby brother as a prop in whatever they were playing. But when but when she went out my door and she got onto that school bus, she shifted into a very different mentality. And I said, Sierra, get in the car. Now, this is the kind of funny part of my story because uh, at this point, I was already destined to be a homeschooler. I just didn't know it. And I'll tell you how I know now. I was driving a Ford Aerostar minivan at the time. And if, if and now that I've been homeschooling for 22 years, if I had known this earlier, I probably would have just given up. But I didn't understand. I already had all the keys, right? So I, I had Sierra go get in the car. And I woke her little brother up and strapped him in his car seat. And I waited for the school bus to go out through my neighborhood and back through uh, down my street again until it would go out onto the main road. And I followed that school bus for 45 minutes through the back hills of Wilsonville, Oregon, because I wanted to talk to my daughter. I wanted to talk to Savannah about how we treat 
our siblings and how we're, how this is not how it this is not how it works. And the whole time I, I'm in my pajamas too. It's probably worth noting. So now I'm following a school bus in my Ford Aerostar minivan in my pajamas for 45 minutes, and I could just hear the Lord and I having this conversation, right? And it was almost as if He was saying, you know, Heidi, maybe if you'd listen to me, you wouldn't be chasing a school bus in your pajamas through the hills of Wilsonville, Oregon, right now. And when we got there, Savannah already knew, right? Because Savannah was watching through the back window of the school bus while her friends were like, your mom is crazy. Your mom's following a school bus. Savannah already knew why I wanted to talk to her. And as soon as we got there, praise the Lord, I didn't have to get out in my pajamas and humiliate myself. I was willing, but I didn't need to because Savannah got off that bus, came right over to the van and she walked right up to her sister and she said, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean what I said back there. And I thought, I'm not doing this anymore. This will be the last year that I have my kids in school. And I prayed for about two weeks. And on a Saturday morning, my husband, uh, on a Saturday morning, my husband and I, you know, laying in bed. And it's probably nine o'clock in the morning. And if you've ever had your kids lean over you while you're sleeping and they wake you up, their very presence wakes you up. It was sort of like that. I was doing that to my husband. I'm leaning over him, just waiting for him to wake up. And finally, he just, (laughs) what are you doing? I said, honey, what would you think if we homeschooled our kids? And the man was so, he was like, who are you? And what have you done with my wife? You don't want to homeschool our kids. You want to get a job. Remember, we've always, this was not what we planned on doing. And I I said, can I just tell you about what's been happening for the last three months at home? And I began to just sort of unpack all of the amazing things that I was seeing as a result of teaching Sierra how to read. Now I'm not only teaching her to read, I'm teaching her to write. She's writing her name. She comes running to the kitchen table in the morning. She can't wait to see what we're gonna do that day. And I told Jay, I said, I think our family, I think we'd find freedom as a family. I think our kids would get along more. And I think that this is something that God would use to grow our family. And so he said, well, let's pray about it. And so we prayed about it. And uh, a few weeks after that, we're coming to the end of the school year, right? So a few weeks after that, I I, uh, I went back to the homeschool supply store and I said, hey, Eli. And he said, oh, you're back. And like, he's not surprised at all because this happens all the time. You know, once a mom finds out that she can do it and her kids are thriving, it changes the way you see education, right? All of a sudden I realize I'm the educator and with a little bit of help, I can do this. And so I went back and I said, I'm going to pull my daughter out of out of second grade. And you got to understand, I don't know where she is, right? Because how many parents really know where their kids are in school? I don't know if she's thriving in reading. I don't know if she's really good at math. I don't know if she sits still for her teacher or if she's got learning issues or any of that. I just send her off on a school bus and I assume they know what they're doing. So I asked Eli, can you give me a basic third grade curriculum? And he walked me through all these options that I had. I picked something very, very simple. And I took them to see, to meet her teacher. I made an appointment with her teacher at the public school. I loved her teacher. I went and I sat down with her. I laid out all my curriculum because I'm nervous, right? My knees are shaking. I'm sweating. I'm thinking she's going to think I'm crazy. I said, I, I want to take Savannah out and homeschool her next year. And I brought some curriculum to show you. And she looked at me just as sweet as could be, big tears in her eyes. And she said, if I could go back and do it again, I would take my kids out too. She said, you can do it. You can do it. What did you bring me? And now I'm thinking, all right, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. So I said, well, I picked out this for handwriting and this is what I picked out for science. And this is what I think we're going to do for history. And she kept saying, I love it. I love it. I love it. And it was like the Lord stepped in to my heart in that moment and just confirmed this thing that he'd been doing in my, in my family for a year. And that was the last time any of our kids ever stepped foot in a school building. And we have been homeschooling ever since.